Unfortunately, this course does not spend a lot of time looking at instrumentation. Scientific instruments are all around us, from digital thermometers, to the oxygen sensors in cars, to the instruments in forensics and medical laboratories, things like x-ray machines, to the instruments that analyze blood, urine, and etc. If you take analytical and physical chemistry courses, a component of these courses is instrumentation, how they work, and their capabilities and limitations in analyzing molecular entities. A mass spectrometer is a commonly used instrument. Given a few micrograms or picograms of a sample, a mass spectrometer will be able to tell you the mass, chemical formula, and provide you with some structural information on the entity. If the sample contained multiple entities, it may even be able to tell you the composition of the mixture. If you've ever been to the airport and had your laptop or your hands or your luggage swabbed and put into a tabletop instrument, that instrument is a mass spectrometer. That instrument is calibrated to detect drugs and explosives. Within a second, the instrument beeps and either flashes green or red. I've been there when the instrument flashes red. Four security guards appear out of nowhere and say those magical words. Please come with us. No, it hasn't happened to me, thank you very much. But right now, we're looking at the analysis of atoms in a mass spectrometer. A mass spectrometer is a very precise and very accurate instrument for determining the mass and abundance of individual atoms. Specifically designed mass spectrometers are capable of determining both mass and abundance to six decimal places. This is the mass spectrum of a single sample of mercury. The inset shows the different isotopes of mercury. For each isotope, the mass and abundance in the sample are reported to six decimal places. This slide shows the isotopic masses and abundances that are tabulated in the best scientific resources. These are the books that research scientists would go to to determine the mass and abundance of the isotopes of a given element. Note that the mass is still reported to six decimal places, but the abundance is reported to fewer than six. Looking carefully, we see that the abundance ranges from one to four decimal places, depending on the element. Why do you think this is the case? I'll give you a hint. The previous mass spectrum was for a single sample of mercury. What is tabulated here are the average values from many samples. What we find is that the isotopic abundance varies between samples. A significant factor for this variance is the origin of the sample. Biological processes often prefer one isotope over another. Samples that are biological in origin will have a different isotopic abundance than samples that are terrestrial in origin. The number of decimal places reported indicates the variability between samples. Also note that the atomic mass of carbon-12 is exactly 12.000 repeating. This is because carbon-12 is the basis for mass measurement. Science has defined the mass of, car of one atom of carbon-12 as exactly 12.0 atomic mass units. Similarly, the mass of one mole of carbon-12 atoms is exactly 12.000 repeating grams. The other elements do not have exact integer atomic masses because neutrons and protons do not have the same mass and because binding those neutrons and protons in the nucleus converts some of the mass to energy. This is, by the way, the realm of nuclear chemistry and nuclear physics, and we're not going to cover nuclear chemistry further in this course. The explanations for non-integer isotopic mass and the varying precision of isotopic abundance are summarized here.
what is shown here is the deviation of the hydrogen 1 to hydrogen 2 ratio called the hydrogen to deuterium ratio in rainwater. This is the deviation from the average abundance ratio. The values are reported in parts per million. They are negative because rainwater is deficient in deuterium. Why? Rainwater comes from the evaporation of surface water. Water containing deuterium is heavier than water containing normal hydrogen. Therefore, less heavy water evaporates. Normal water has a molecular mass of 18 grams per mole. If the water molecule contained one deuterium atom, the molecular mass would be 19 grams per mole, or two deuterium atoms, and the mass would be 20 grams per mole. The heavy water that does evaporate is still heavier and rains out quicker than normal water. So looking at the values near the coasts, they are less negative than the values further inland. For example, the ratio is negative 64.4 in Truro, Nova Scotia, negative 78 in Ottawa, Ontario, and negative 121.2 in Gimli, Manitoba. These values are even more negative going further north because that precipitation is primarily from storm systems that move northwards from the southern coasts. So what good is this information? Well, forensics teams can use this information to determine where you lived. Plants and animals that grow in a region use rainwater to grow. They incorporate this hydrogen to deuterium deviation into their plant and animal structures. When we drink local water and eat local plants and animals, we incorporate this hydrogen to deuterium ratio into our bodies. The picture is of Madame Victoria. Her real identity is unknown. Her skeletal remains were discovered in Montreal in 2001. She had been dead for over two years. However, her hair remained. Hair grows approximately one centimeter per month. By analyzing Madame Victoria's 30 centimeter hair, forensic scientists were able to determine that she was living in northern Ontario or, or Quebec three and a half years before her death, and that she lived in seven different locations in the three and a half years leading up to her death. This information was obtained solely from an isotopic analysis of her hair. However, it wasn't enough for information to identify her, and her identity remains unknown today. This same type of isotopic analysis is used to determine the origin of plant-based drugs seals seized from smugglers. Isotopic mass is the mass of individual isotopes. However, the periodic table reports the average of the isotopic masses, which is called the atomic mass. The calculation of atomic mass from the isotopic mass is presented here. So let's use this formula to determine the atomic mass of copper. So the equation that we have is that the atomic mass is equal to the summation over all of the isotopes of the isotopic mass times the isotopic abundance. The data for copper was presented a few slides earlier. There are two isotopes of copper. And so substituting these values in, we have isotopic mass of 62.929599. Atomic mass units times the isotopic abundance as a fractional form, 0 0.6917.
this is the data for 63 copper. And we now need to add the data for the other isotope. The mass of 65 copper is 64.927. Seven nine three atomic mass units, and the abundance is zero point three zero eight three, and this is the data for sixty five copper. So when we plug all of these values into a calculator, we get a value of sixty three point five four five six four two atomic mass units but we need to look at significant digits the abundances is are only reported to four significant digits so this value is only valid to four significant digits and so reported to four significant digits, we have 63.55 atomic mass units. Interestingly, if you look on a periodic table, what you find is that the atomic mass is actually reported as 63.546 atomic mass units. Why is this the case? We are using the same data that scientists use to calculate the values on the periodic table. Why does our calculated value have fewer significant digits? The answer actually is interesting. Because the significant digits method is an approximate method, the correct method of calculating significant digits is called propagation of error. This method, propagation of error, is significantly more complicated to apply, but shows that in this case, one more digit is required in the answer. You will learn and use propagation of error in advanced physical and analytical chemistry courses and in your physics courses.